Okay, this is MXUX. I'm going to throw out this quick video before this pack closes on Faraday Future, FFIE, and that's uh, PASC. Let's get to these slides. These are some uh, features uh, that I think everybody might have forgot about or never knew about. Let's just go through these slides real quick here. This is MXUX. All right, on the launch. Okay, uh, I've covered a bit of this on the other presentation. Let me just go through these real quick here. This is a PPV pre-production vehicle. This was crash tested in 2017. I don't think they have to crash test it again. Uh, it's U.S. and China certified as per auto manufacturing regulations. So it's ready to go in both home markets, as they say. So the U.S. market release is going to be in May 2022, and the China market release production start May 2023. Uh, there's 14,000 pre-orders right now. There's a 5K deposit on the orders, some of them, and they expect to be profitable in 2024. So 22, they put out the FF91 uh, in America. 2023, they start. Uh, putting out, kicking out cars in China and Korea, and in 2024, they expect to be profitable. And, you know, I think they will be. They put two, jeez, uh, what is it, billion dollars into the development of this vehicle? It's a very mature development. As a matter of fact, uh, uh, Karsten Brettfeld is just upgrading it now to 5G and other things, I'm sure, and maybe the screen resolutions as well. Uh, but let's just go through this. Uh, the body cabbie. Okay, this is the big deal on this car. And I compared this to the, there's links in the last presentation to the new Rolls-Royce SUV. It's got screens facing the rear seats. They show the speed of the car. You know, location, you know, destination. Who wants to see that? I want to see your uh, YouTube, your... Uh, Instagram. Anyway, there's uh, and the same thing with the Maybach. The Maybach's even worse. I mean, the Maybach, they put some badging on it. It's a Maybach SUV, ultra premium, same price, nearly the same price as this. I think it is, it might even be, uh, well, it's about the same. Just badging and pinstriping. Uh, the zero gravity seats in this car are built to NASA specifications. And, um, there's 11 uh, displays. Six of them are focused on the driver. And there's a 27-inch uh, screen in the rear seat that pops down. Um, all the controls are done with touch touch screens, you know, the windows, the door locks, all that. And they're placed in uh, convenient locations. Anyway, I'll show a video later. 0 to 60, 2.39 seconds, three motors, 1,050 horsepower. Dynamic vehicle control. they got uh, rear-wheel steering. So it's four-wheel steering, and uh, there's torque vectoring on the rear wheels. Uh, there's two motors on the rear and one in the front. There's also electronic stability control. I'm sure a lot of other uh, electronics involved in that. Uh, and there's uh, 880 patents filed on the design of this vehicle. I don't know, about 500 have been issued. On the battery. Now, this is a liquid uh liquid cool battery it is immersed in uh, a fluid that does not conduct electricity and all the batteries are surrounded by it it doesn't go through little channels and so forth uh, the the water flows right over the batteries themselves anyway it's faster charging and faster discharging and better performance i mean uh, boosts of power you know when you step on it and so forth uh it's a 130 kilowatt battery the range is listed as 300 miles plus. Now, uh, Karsten uh, Britfeld did a drive in, you know, the PPV vehicle from L.A. Uh, to Las Vegas. And um, anyway, if you if you take the miles traveled, I think it was uh, 250 or something like that. Anyway, and add it to the miles that were left on the car, the range indicated on that real-world use on the battery was 380 miles so it's not around town driving but that 
is considerably more than 300. Uh, it's estimated it'll get a 20 to 80 percent charge in 25 minutes. And um, you know the whole thing's proprietary. Uh, the inverters, uh, uh, Monroe praised the uh, efficient design of the inverters. They're a stack design, uh, something I don't understand, not being an interview and an engineer, but um, uh, Monroe says they're the cat's uh, pajamas. Okay, now self-driving. Now, this is a mystery on this car. Uh, there was a system developed by uh, Faraday Future, and it was cleared to test on roads in California in 2017. Now, in this uh, Sandy Monroe interview with Karsten Brittfeld, um, he starts talk. he does a full little dialogue uh, diatribe on self-driving there. He feels that uh, there's only going to be one or two systems that are cleared uh, legally to operate uh, worldwide, and um, uh, he, he is setting this car up as a platform, as I mentioned in the last video. There's going to be a full array of sensors and cameras. And now, this is what uh, Breitfeld said. The self-driving computer will be replaceable and upgradable. So this is one of the uh, upgrades he's doing to the car, too. So, you know, the question is, will it, will it come with a standard system that can be upgraded? You know, uh, would it ship with just a base system? Could it possibly be upgraded to Apple hardware and software? Could this be the Apple car? That certainly would make sense. Anyway, I think it's a great idea having a replaceable uh, uh, component like that. And uh, we all know about how computer hardware goes. Anyway, I don't think uh, Tesla's thought of this, although Tesla has a big bay under the back seat. I'm sure they probably could if they wanted to. A little more complicated. I think this is looking at like a hot swap kind of thing. Anyway, maybe not that easy. Anyway, uh, it's uh, level three capable um, as it is uh, with the standard uh, system that they had out a few years ago. Now, I think this whole self-driving it's going to be a real surprise with this car when it launches. I think uh, everybody's going to get a big surprise. I don't know. Uh, you know, they're kind of dodgy on it. Anyway. Now, function uh, voice control. Okay. All the functions in the car, the air, the fans, all this, the radio, the maps, uh, take me to Starbucks. I don't know if you've seen that video. Take me to a coffee shop in Santa Monica. There's natural voice commands. This is not keywords. It is natural voice commands. You just phrase a question. How, you know, how far is it to Las Vegas? Or, you know, what's the temperature outside? Anyway, it, it's not like uh, open window, open driver's side window. You don't do that. Uh, so, it's natural language, and it's separate for each passenger. There's a mic and a camera in each passenger's location, so this uh, can be tailored to each passenger. And the reason that it is so... Uh, that phone's going off. What I hate that phone. Anyway, uh, the reason it's, uh, it's working, and, and this is quite powerful, is because they're using cloud processing. So it's, they're not using the onboard processor to do this speech... Uh, processing they're using uh, you know cloud processing and they got a supercomputer somewhere and you know that's how they're doing it anyway this was developed under 4g it's now 5g it's going to be more responsive so this should be a really big uh, deal uh, for uh, the car okay now it's I don't know if this is old hat but it's got valet self part this is something they developed years ago. You pull up to a destination, you get out of the car, and you push the key fob or whatever, and the, and the door shuts, and the, and the car leaves. And it will go out and find its own parking space. And it will park the car, which is a big, long car. And then when you come back, you press the key fob, and the car will unpark itself, drive up, and pick you up. 
and this is all autonomous. So, you know, you go to the grocery store, you get out, push the fob, tell it to park. You come out of the grocery store, you push the fob, it comes back. Pretty cool. I don't know if Tesla has that. Anyway, um, before I close this video, I'm going to show a corporate uh, video on the interior of the car because this is the, the selling point of that uh, vehicle is this um, interior. All right, let me go. Okay, if I did this right, this is the, uh, oh, there's YT speech. This is the uh, official video for Faraday Future. I just wanted to include this in this presentation because it gives you an idea of uh, of the uh, they're they're doing the seats there. But I want to these are the some of the interior components. This is the impressive part of this car. There's the zero G seats being developed, and um, of course they fully recline in the back. Um, and there's a schematic of the car. Now, that, that's the seating. Look how nice that is. Okay, executive seating in the back. Now, this is kind of a teaser. Now, there's the 27 inch screen that pops down in the back. For, now, look how nice that is. Let me just. Uh, go back to that for a second pause that look at that that's the interior of that car wow I guess uh, this is the 27 inch screen here and I guess they got this seat down here you can see there's some more screens here there's screens everywhere anyway let's keep playing this and uh, that's the uh, main control screen for the driver there. And um, electronic rear view mirror. All the, all the controls for the windows and stuff are all screens. So you got more screens there and you got to, they show a dimming, auto dimming uh, ceiling glass there. Skylight, watch that. Cool. Now that that's an example of some of the other screens that are on the car. All the controls are electronic. There's no buttons at all, uh, and they're all on individual screens. And there's a view of the interior of that car. Just look at that. I'll tell you, it just puts that new Mercedes to shame. I think. And. It, Obviously got a dynamite sound system. And uh, it's got a spa mode as well. I mean, uh, let's see if we can get another shot of the seats. I mean, that's the 60 degree recline. And there's another screen there between the two passengers. And that's on the doorway there. And this has environmental sounds and so forth. There's different settings. Just look at that interior of that car. Look how beautiful that thing is. I got to tell you, I am so impressed. I mean, why would you buy a Rolls? You know, I was looking at the Rolls. Uh, I got it in the last video, a link to the Rolls Royce Doug DeMiro review. Dude, they got screens in the back of the seats. They're showing the speed of the vehicle. What a joke. I'll tell you. And then that... Um, uh, God, I can never think of the name of that ultra premium uh, SUV. Another another thing that has no nowhere near this. I mean, look at that. There's a screen coming down in the back. I mean, that's what you want. You don't want some dinky little screen. Look at that. Look at that. Let's just go back to that real quick. Maybach. That's the other one that's this Maybach SUV. Boy, what a joke compared to this. And there's a screen coming down. Now, now that, that is what you want. You want a screen like that. And you want to cast your YouTube or your Instagram or whatever it is. Just going to let this play. 
whatever you're watching on your phone. You don't want to see the map. You don't want to see that crap. Anyway, just wanted to include this. I think it's a great car. And this is a speech by YT. I'm just going to let this play for a second. This is a very, uh, there's YT. He is the, uh, the former CEO is now the, the, the CEO of uh, Consumer uh, Experience. And this is a great speech. I advise everyone to watch it. All right, I'm going to close this video out. It's a little too long to play right here. All right, this is MXUX. I hope you like the video. The specs coming out. Uh, I think this is going to be a contender. I think it's really up against the Model X. Model S, maybe not. Thanks, everybody.